The truth of the matter is, God has given you free will. You corrupt. You know, you're not born a sinner, friend. No one is born a sinner. People choose to sin. That's one of the lies of Christianity. That they, that they told you how to sin called original sin. You know, whenever you sin in the garden, the only way that affects you is that you die physically because of what they did. So because they, they act the tree of life. They ate from the tree of life to stay alive. Kicked out of the garden, no more tree of life, they die physically. That's why every person here will die physically at some point in time because what Adam and Eve did in the garden. It's just consequences for, your, for their actions. But as far as going to hell, you're not responsible for Adam and Eve's sin. You're not responsible for your parents' sin. You're responsible for your sin. That's why God will call you to give an account. You know, you can stop sinning if you want to. And that's why God will judge you for your sin. Because you have the ability to stop it. Can I define sin? Anything against God's will. Okay, okay, so if, if, if you um, lust for somebody, if it's just the immediate reaction of seeing somebody and having lust, is that a sin? You're acting like it's an accident. You still choose to do it. No, you don't actually. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Like what I saw that you're doing, I was like, it's a nice move. Yeah, that's it. Like, I mean, you're not going to go on to have sex with her. But no, you could have done. You could have turned your eyes away. Or you could have self-control and looked at her face instead of the guy did. You could have self-control. You trained yourself to have self-control. What's your problem? That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. You know the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Because God says they are. Sexual thoughts outside of marriage. I can have sex with my wife all day if I want to. It's not wrong. No, it's not. It's not inherent. You choose to do it. No one made you think that thought. Yeah, it's called bestiality, and that's wicked. You just stop doing that. But if you're a monosexual as well, sir, that's sin as well. That's monosexual. You're a monosexual. You say you like to masturbate. You're a monosexual. That's sin, sir. You have to sex with yourself. You know, God made sex inside of marriage. You're going to receive pleasure from sex from your spouse alone. Uh, that's in the beginning. God said two should become one, there'll be one flesh. That, that, that's what Adam and were married. Marriage is some ceremony in church. Marriage is a man and woman commend themselves together for life. Before man and before God. Commend themselves to be together for good, for better, for worse. Till death do them part. Not a church ceremony. You know, part of the problem is people want to save all this money for this big marriage. $20,000 wedding. They're going to have a horrible marriage after that. Not about the ceremony. It's about what happens after that. It's about the marriage itself. That's a godly marriage. You know, the Bible says that, that a man should love the wife as Christ loved the church. He laid his life down for the church. A man should love his wife like that. And a woman should submit to her husband and respect him as the authority in the household. The Bible says the head of every man is Christ, the head of every woman is man. No, the Bible says that the husband should love the wife as Christ loves the church. Now, if, if my wife uh, brings a situation before me and reveals to me that I'm wrong, I'd be willing to submit to her and say, you know, I'm wrong. But, but what it comes down to is that I'm the final say in the situation. And then I take responsibility. What's that? Bible says in the kingdom of God there is no male nor female. We're talking about salvation. There's neither male nor female, nor Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free. Salvation is offered all, male and female. I mean, there's an authority structure. There's even an authority structure in the Trinity. you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What's that? All inferior? Yeah. What do you mean? Why, why do you put yourself above someone else? I'm not above her. I'm a, I have authority over her. That's it's not like I'm better than her, sir. You're mistaken. Okay? I, I always want to preach and describe it like this. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, yes. It's not sexist. Bible, obedience to God. It's not sexist. 
I love my wife. I love her as Christ of the church. Let's check this. No, it's based on what God said. Not on my genitalia, ma'am. What God said. I didn't say they love her equally. There's order. Okay? I like take, for example, the army. You have generals, you have uh, colonels, lieutenant colonels, pets, all the way down to a private. They're all equally human. There's order in the military. Yeah, but it's not based on their gender. It's based on their experience. It's yeah, but the problem God. is God made the order in the family. No, because a woman can be completely like, more intelligent and like, more experienced. It means nothing. Inequity is wickedness. It means nothing. Means nothing. It means okay. nothing. Okay. God said the order in the family. So God said the author in the family. This is an example, man. It's not a perfect example. God said the order in the family is male, female, children. That's what God said. Okay? No, I sure don't. But that's the order in the family. You know, if, if you're a woman and you won't submit to your husband, you're in sin. If you're a man and you're not loving your wife as Christ loved the church, then you're in sin. So the salvation all for all, you're all equally human in that way, that's how you're equal. Of course not. If a man abuses an authority, he's wrong, he's in sin. It's not a matter of, get, you know, get on your feet and obey, it's not a matter of that. Because he, he loves his wife, and that's why she's, she's willing to submit to him because of his love for her. That's the way I have my wife. Well, then you're rebellious. No, you have a problem. Well, I mean, she'd probably seek action through the authorities. Well, I think she should try to persevere through it if she can. You know, divorce is the last option, the last resort. It shouldn't be sought right away. Hey, how you doing? Now, she really loves uh, her husband. Nice, John. She's really Can you do me a favor? The vow she I give you a card. Can you send me some of pictures? People before God. Yeah, yeah. I, she's I, going I to work and do this. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but keep on going. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's, okay. there's okay. reason to leave Thanks, him. Wait, but like I said, divorce is the last resort. Not the first resort. People these days, they get married. They're not really committed. I'm not getting married again after divorce. No, that, that's, that's not it. The Bible says that he's against that. Shouldn't do that. The Bible says if you get married after you get divorced, you make yourself an adulterer if you're a woman, and you're an adulterer if you're a man. So why is that? Because she's not going to be This is what the Bible says. And, that, and that's why, and that's why, you should be very careful who you marry. You should seek God's face. See what God wants for your marriage. What's that? We've already talked about that, ma'am. No, yeah. It's monosexual and sin, yes. Um, why is it that um, if you marry after you divorce, why are you suddenly an adulterer if you're not tied to the other person? Well, you're still tied to them. But you're divorced. Yeah, you should do. You, if, if you wait till they die, then you're allowed to marry again. But, you, but as long as they're still alive, you should try to be reconciled to them, the Bible says. But the Bible says. What about an annulment? No, it shouldn't be an annulment. That's why you should be careful. You marry. You, people, oh, you marry for lust, not for love. Love is not some feeling in your in your brain, or a hug, or a kiss, or sex. Love is the middle of the will. You decide in your heart, I'm going to live with this person till death do us part, through good and bad. And if you're not willing to make the commitment, then don't get married to them. You know, we have, me and my wife, we're both Christians. We haven't always had an easy time. You know, hard some time. Times where I don't, I don't feel like loving her, but I do, I do love her. Love's not a feeling. You're middle of the will. And God commands you, if you're get married, to love your spouse till death be part through good and bad.